Hey everyone, it's Norman here, better known as the Fierce Storm, and today I'm going to be talking about WWE 2K20 for the PS4, Xbox One, of course, PC. The game was released October 22nd, 2019. Um, the hype for the game that was built out for it was huge. Of course, we found out what the collector's issue was going to be. A lot of people were super psyched, happy about this game coming out. Um, but what really kind of made me a little bit upset to find out that Visual Concepts and 2K kicked and pushed aside a development team that was there from the very beginning, going back all the way to the PS1 days, um, to the original SmackDown, I'm talking about Ukes. Um, Ux was the foundation of which the WWE games became popular on. Uh, without Ux, there would be no WWE games. So kind of in a way, it was kind of like upsetting to hear that from my part, like hearing from like on social media that Ux was no longer going to be a part of the development team. Um, I, was also, I was also kind of scared, kind of in a way almost, uh, for the future of WWE games. But I was going to wait and see what happens with WWE games and what Visual Concept and 2K had to offer. And of course, they made the announcement that there was going to be no normal DLC like this year would be like uh, where we get superstars, move packs, etc. Um, the original concept they put out for 2K Originals. Uh, was pretty interesting if not I didn't pick up the game on launch day which was October 22nd 2019 I kind of put off on it not wanting to do it uh, to me it just didn't seem like it was worth me picking it up and I made the smart decision on not picking it up on launch day because the pre-order bonus was the bump in the night which included Bray Wyatt's uh, alter ego the fiend wasn't even available of course, like always, the game was broken. Uh, bugs, glitches, crashes. The game was martyred with these. Um, Visual Concept, 2K, took initiative and listened to the audience complain. Um, didn't respond. They did hear and they released a patch. So their first patch didn't do anything to fix anything. More importantly, when they did release the Bump in the Night DLC pack, uh, you had to go through the 2K Towers, basically a 2K Tower, to unlock the Fiend. Which, to a lot of people, they don't want that. They don't want to go through a tower to unlock a character. When promised a character as a pre-order bonus, that character should automatically be unlocked. Needless to say, 2K continued to release patches, and on 1.07 patch, uh, it seemed that most of the bugs were fixed within the system. IO, on the other hand, uh, didn't bother with the game. Um, but unfortunate enough, I kind of caved in when I saw the price for a low price for $20 um, not too long ago. I picked up my copy for the PS4, adding it to my um, WWE games that I own. So let's get down to my thoughts, my personal opinion about the game. So first, let's talk about the roster. Um, the roster in this game is just updated with newer people added on to it. Of course, like always, like every year, uh, when it comes to WWE games, they take the previous DLC and put it into the game. Removing other people, like other legends, instead of going back and trying to contact them, re-sign them to continue that legacy that was in the previous games, 
and add them on into this particular game. Uh, there's so many great legends that they had into the game from 2K16 um, that was in 17, in 18, um, and in 19 as well. N they're just missing now in the game. Uh, Mr. Perfect, Ravishing Rick Rude, uh, Tatanka, Sid, uh, Rick Martell. Uh, they have Savio Vega, D'Lo Brown was a part of their, you know, comma. Uh, there are just so many legends. Larry Sabisco, Arn Anderson. The list just goes on. And there's so many of them, there's just so many missing into this game. It's not even funny. Uh, and 2K needs, and Visual Concept needs to realize is that you have these legends that people still want to play with, but yet again, you let them expire and you don't carry it over. Uh, and continue to try to resign them into the into the deal, get them into something like a long-term deal where they're going to continuously be in the game regardless of whether they're on good terms or bad terms with WWE or not. Um, but nevertheless to say, the legends uh, and the roster <clears throat> is the same basically with just an update with the current superstars that are currently on the NXT and the WWE roster on Raw and SmackDown as well. So the roster is pretty solid um, in my book. Uh, the controls, let's talk about the controls here. You know, they keep changing controls like some cheap whore. Every year, the controls are always different. They never stay the same at all. Um, and it's always an excuse of, well, we wanted to improve on this. We wanted to make it easier for the player on this. You're making it difficult for the player to learn the controllers. The controls, sorry. To learn the controls. Keep with the controls. Better yet, I got a better one for you. Why don't you allow the player to go into the options and the control settings to set their own controls to how they like? That would be even better. So, that would be an option to do. Gameplay. Now, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to sit up here and say everything is uh, okie dokie, you know. Everything's on the good end with, with Visual Concept and 2K when it comes to this game. Is the game still broken? Absolutely, it's still broken. There's so much stuff they still need to work on and still do with this game. Um, and I'm going to get into those things. I'm going to nitpick into those things as we get along into this forward. So, this particular game for 2k <clears throat> uh, like I said the game is still broken there's so much still so wrong with the game and let's start off with the modes in the game there's so many features that are still missing that were part of the other games um, that THQ did strip uh, they stripped over the course um, and when they got a hold when 2k got a hold of it it was just a broken shell of what was left um, there's still no special guest referee. There's still no buried alive match. There's still no casket matches. And when I say casket match, I don't want a fucking casket sitting on the outside of the ring like a, a like an empty casket on the floor. I want a casket to where it's like a coffin up against the ring where you got to toss the opponent into it or whatever or toss him out of the ring or knock him into it and then shut the coffin lid shut. Um, buried Alive match, I don't want a, one of those stupid little things of where you knock him into the thing or whatever and you start shoveling and then he can get back up or whatever. Some hokey dokey kind of thing almost in a way. Uh, you know, make it worth the wild for the WWE gamer to play. Um, but for the most part, there's no special guest referee. There's no Buried Alive match. There's no casket match. Um, there's no strap match. So, some of these things are missing within the game. Uh, but, for what it's worth, they do still have your core gameplay. They have, like, the Survivor Series thing. You can do Survivor Series matches. Uh, the Royal Rumbles there still, which makes it fun, of course. So, your standard, uh, variety of 
WWE game is still there within it. So the universe mode needs a hell of a lot of improvement. Um, one of the bugs in the game, when you create a championship in the game, uh, it basically says the wrong name that you put into the game. Basically, if I create uh, an alternate version of the universe title, which is now blue, um, it says still, well, I'll give an example, Razor Ramon, and still the bad guy, Razor Ramon. It's That's not the title name. It's the Universal Championship. Same thing with the Intercontinental Championship. If you recreate an older title from the Attitude Era of the Intercontinental Championship with the proper logos, it was from that period of time. Again, it messes up and it says the wrong name onto it. It doesn't say the proper name for it. So that needs to be fixed and addressed as well. Uh, create a championship. There's a lot of wrong with create a championship. There's a lot of wrong with that particular feature. Um, one in particular is the they didn't update the custom plates uh, with a bunch of people. Everybody that's in the game, I don't give a crap whether you may never be a WWE champion or 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 universal champion needs to have a custom plate. Um, you need to update these things and get newer shirts into the game through an update or a patch or something. But that's just an example of when it comes to it. Or if you're editing a championship or or making the color change on the strap, it should be doing everything on that title. Uh, so that way we don't have to go back in there and use the different parts into to recreate that. Uh, so, just a little thing added on to it as well, and add more names into it. You know, uh, it's kind of odd and weird that we can't go back and create something that's from the World Wrestling Federation. It's hanging World Wrestling Federation instead of it, you know, for whatever it's worth. But that's just my opinion and my view. I mean, I'm pretty sure other people will feel the same way as I do about that. Uh, create, <clears throat> create a superstar. Um, that needs to be worked on as well. More names. My name is Norman. My name's not even in the game. You have so much missing and so much stuff that's not even there. So they need to work on that and get that up to par. A lot of stuff that's there for towns and all that kind of stuff, they need to add every town. Whether they whether they want to or not, maybe a lot of more work. They need to add every town, every name. Um and I know a lot of people may hate this, but there are people that are going to want to create Chris Benoit. They're going to they're, they're going to be one of people that are going to create a lot of people that are maybe barred or banned in WWE or blacklisted from WWE. But those names need to be in there, whether they're gimmick names or real names or whatever. They need to still be in the game so people can create it if they want to or have the option, along with the parts as well, to go along with it. Um, my opinion again, it's just a view that goes along with the music. Um, as well, uh, you know, I mean, I know AJ Lee's never going to come back to WWE. Why isn't her music in the game? Why isn't Arn Anderson music in the game? You know, these are some of the things that need to be addressed and put back into the game. When something, if you take the person out of the game, leave everything there for that person to be recreated. If the person wants to recreate it or better yet, if someone else recreates it and they download them from the community creations they can still go ahead and go in and do that to make that character or download it or, or, or rearrange it or whatever but it still needs to be part of the game whether the person is a part of the game or not part of the game the other thing also is the fact of the matter of when you're going to edit a superstar it goes along with the create a superstar uh, they have the parts I'll give a great example. The Ultimate Warrior. Uh, he's got face paint. But the Ultimate Warrior wore many different face paints and many different outfits. They've got the outfits in the game, but we cannot put the face paint to match the outfit. So why would you have him in the game and we cannot edit him? The point of editing a superstar to our liking means the hair, the face, even the mustache. Let us remove it. Can't do that? Well... Why have that person in the game to be edited? Uh, it's just something they need to improve on and something they need to make readily available for the next game that maybe come out, maybe 2K21 
or WWE 2K21 to be exact. Uh, so those are some things that need to be worked on. Create Arena is another thing that needs an aspect. There's, create Arena has become stale and boring almost in a sense. You can create things, but you're limited to what your functions are. So I'll give a great point and example. The banners in the old school arena for like Saturday night's main event or Nitro or uh, SummerSlam 88. Why can't we have those in the arenas by ringside? Uh, why can't we change color? Why can't we have that? That's something that needs to be added into the game. So people who want to create old school arenas can do so. Uh, and don't limit us to the parts that we're going to use or how we want to arrange things in the arena. Um, that's just something they need to work on. They need to have a lot of parts for old school um, along with new stuff as well. Uh, and don't always assume that people want uh, the newer stuff for the modern stuff for the, the HD background and all that kind of stuff because a lot of people don't. A lot of people like myself who play the games like the older school style. Um, and give options to allow that to happen, uh, even how the older sets were made up back then in the day. Allow those things to be placed into the game and have them into there. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing also I want to point out is that a lot of people um, with the towers, the, 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 the towers and whatnot, 2K likes to make something and they like to 2K fi it. Or a visual concept likes to take it and say, okay, this is a 2K style that we're putting into it. Our own little spin on it. People don't want that. Um, you know, you give them a showcase, that's fine. It doesn't need to have my player. And if you're going to do my player, shorten it for maybe, at best, maybe a three-hour play through the game. At best, because that's honestly and truthfully what it's worth. I mean, the older SmackDown games... Yeah, maybe play two or three hours of a story, maybe, and you were done. You could play with different characters, but it was still pretty much done with. And, I mean, you don't necessarily need to 2K5 it by telling the player, okay, we can't have this, we can't have that, whatever, I can't use the pedigree. I have to unlock these things. No. If you're going based by reality, I can do whatever moves I want to do. If I want to climb up on my railing over behind me here, I want to do a, a shooting star press and break my neck, I could probably do that. The, the, the point being is, is that they, they limit you what you can do and you have to buy stuff within the My Player thing, which is totally stupid. Uh, everything should be unlocked. The moves that we want, attributes how we want to set them to, should all be there to do for and no my player kickstart or whatever crap it's just stupid if you're gonna do that just remove the feature altogether cuz I've gone through the past couple of years and I've just been bored uh, I get to the certain point where I beat it and I'm like eh. it's not it, it, it wasn't worth my time to play through it um, I could skip over of course I'm gonna hear comments skip over if you don't like it well I could yeah but it's there in the game for the experience, and I want to experience it, so yeah, it's there. But if they're not going to change anything, they're not going to do anything to make it more fun to play through, then guess what? It shouldn't be in the game. Just have the showcase mode. It's perfectly fine. Showcase mode will suffice, and it's okay. So, I think I touched about almost everything on there. Oh, DLC, of course. I forgot about the DLC, of course. So the DLC uh, this year was amazing. I, I, I give you a hand, 2K. You did a great job this year with DLC. The original content was fabulous. Uh, can can you know, can only imagine what you're going to do next year, but this was good stuff. The original stuff that you put off this year was really cool. Um, but still give flavor to it a little bit. Give the people what they really want. You have the original content, which is three or four packs, but also still give the other stuff like future superstars, more legends, etc. You know, you still need to add those in there. And for the ever loving living God, 
if you do that, if you go back and you start doing the 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 future stars or the legends, no more moves. Whatever you include in the game is there. If it needs to be put elsewhere, then by all means, stick it into the next game or whatever. Let the people know, hey, we heard you. We're putting the game. We have it on our, on our things for next year's game. Unfortunate enough, no DLC for Move Pack or make it an option. Uh, especially with DLC, if there's a character we want, like maybe one or two characters we want, and we don't want to download the whole pack because we don't feel like it, make it an option for single downloads. Like, you know, you choose the character you want, you build your own pack, basically, how you want it. So, it's just a little bit of an option thing or whatever. Um, online play. I don't use online play. I don't play online, honestly, because I prefer playing by myself. Or if I have someone come over, we'll chill and play or whatever. I'm old school like that. Online play is there for people who want to play online. It's cool and all that kind of stuff, but technically, you really don't need online play. You just need the community creations and all that kind of stuff. So, 2K20, it's martyred uh, with bad and mixed reviews. A lot of people call this game the trash. I'm not going to say it's trash. I'm not going to say it's bad. It's okay. Um... I did pick up the game. I did get the DLC for it. Um, I'm having fun playing through Universe Mode, but there are still some things that 2K does need to work on. Um, so, my thoughts, my opinion. Thank you guys for watching the video. Please leave your comments and thoughts down below. Smack the like button if you enjoyed the video. And I will check you guys out on the next video. Or actually, sorry, I won't check you. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Later, guys.